My name is Silas, and my friends and colleagues know two very important things about me. I'm a conductor, and I love coffee, especially espresso. No matter where I travel in the world, the first thing I try to do is find the best coffee shop and learn about the local coffee drinking habits. If I can, I try to meet up with old friends or make new ones in a coffee shop, of course, so we can talk about life, art, music, or whatever's on our minds. I found that there's no better way to get to know a conductor a little better than by having coffee with the maestro. Today I'm having coffee with Holly Cho. Holly is the assistant conductor at the Tonhalle Orchestra in Zurich, Switzerland, and music director of two local community orchestras there, the Orchesterverein Wiedekon and the University of St. Gallen Alumni Symphony Orchestra. She also holds a prestigious fellowship in the German Music Council's Dirigenten Forum. And now I'm going to catch up with Holly over a coffee. Good morning, Holly. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> well, I guess it's it's good morning for me, but it's uh, four in the afternoon where you are. Yes. Yeah. Where are you, by the way? Thank you. I am currently in my uh, flat in Alstetten, which is part of Zurich. Okay. So you, you living in Zurich, but you, I think, spend a lot of time traveling around. Yes, yes, yes. I've been very fortunate to be studying here um, with Johanna Schleffli at the Zurich University of the Arts. And part of our master's program is to be traveling around in different countries within Europe to have opportunities to conduct. Oh, man. I studied with Johannes for two summers. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he, was, um, he was teaching in the Czech Republic with Kirk Trevor. Uh, yeah. oh, it was a long time ago, 15 years ago or 12 years ago okay. and something like that. Yeah. And um, and then I went to one of his workshops. I visited one of his workshops in northern Czech Republic. And I'm trying to remember the name of the town. It's just south of the German border. But anyway, beautiful area up there. Mm -hmm. Nice. And what is the name of that town? I guess it doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Johannes is great. He's so powerful. That's what I uh, really great. liked about he's, his conducting. Yeah. He's the best teacher I've ever had, like hands down. Yeah, right. I feel very fortunate to be working with him. Yeah. Well, my day has just started, so I have to have my um, my coffee in the morning. So I know it's the afternoon. Are you drinking something different? I am. I'm trying to wean myself off from coffee, so I am drinking honey water. It's not really honey tea, but just hot water with honey. Okay. Well, sounds delicious. Yeah. I've been <laughs> drinking it since I was a child. I, it's just like a very comfort food kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about your um, like upbringing and stuff, because I know that you were born in South Korea, but you grew up in America, mostly in uh, California, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was born in Seoul, and when I was an infant, I moved to Daegu, uh, which is more south of Seoul. Okay. And that's where I grew up until I was age 10, 9, 10. Okay. And then my family went, uh, came over to the States. And yeah, I moved around a lot. Uh, I was first in Orlando, Florida, then Texas for a year, wow. a little bit longer in Orlando, and then Georgia and Dunwoody, which is near Atlanta, and then California for 10 years, and oh. then Boston for a year and a half to do my first master's degree at the New England Conservatory and then Zurich. Okay. Well, then we have this in common. We've both lived all over America. Which is yeah. kind of interesting because, you know, from Florida to California to Boston, different to Texas, mm -hmm. different countries, basically. Yeah, yeah. A and little bit and how was your experience living in different states? Um, well, it's funny because I, I'm, I'm from Texas, but I lived in, after Texas, I lived in California. And then I moved right to the here. East Coast and I lived in New York City and I've lived in Virginia. And, and then I moved to Colorado and now I live in Kansas. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've done the West Coast, the East Coast, Texas, which is its own thing. Um, <laughs> Virginia is kind of the South, but not really. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I lived in the mountains and now I live in the plains. And um, I think people are people everywhere, even in other mm -hmm. countries. But um, sometimes the eating habits and just yeah. um, the friendly factor goes up and down. 
So I don't think <laughs> yeah. New Yorkers are not friendly. They're a different kind of friendly. They're to the yeah. point. They, everyone's in a rush. So we don't have time to like chit chat. But now I go in, in Kansas, I walk into a place. And before you can do any business, there's five minutes of like, how you doing? How's it going? Oh, what with the weather? What are you doing? And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm here to do business. <laughs> That's funny. I felt the same way when I moved from the West Coast to East Coast to Boston. Um, Boston tends to be a little bit more like New York, I think, also. Yeah. I'm sure the weather has a lot to do with it. Um, yeah, maybe. People are in a rush and it's cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what inspired you then to move to Europe? I got super lucky. And this is one of those things that I could have like really have never planned or have uh, or seen it coming. Um, I was doing a workshop with Larry Ratcliffe and Don Schleicher. I'm sure you know. And of course, yeah. Them, yeah. Right. Yeah. So in Sofia, I was doing a workshop with them and my yeah. teacher, uh, Johannes Schleffi, he was visiting Sofia as well. He had a course that he was teaching, a different course, and he had finished a few days earlier than our um, master class. And so he just came by to see Larry. Oh, okay. Really close friends. And there he saw me conducting um, for a few days. He stayed, I think, three days, just like in the morning sessions. And on the last day, like, you know, we in this um, ICWF, I don't know if you know it with. Um, yeah, sure. I did it once also yeah, with Gustav Meyer. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, you know, there's like 30 conductors there and everybody's like talking. Who is he? Who's this, you know, European teacher? Uh, why is he here to watch? Or, you know, if there was a lot of small talk going around and I had no idea who he was. <laughs> yeah. And on the last day, I just heard that he was teaching in Switzerland. Nobody told me that he was like a great teacher, you know. Yeah. And on the last day, um, very stupidly, I went up to him to introduce myself, but to ask him, hi, look, can you recommend me some schools in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea who he was, really. Oh, that's just funny. His name. Yeah. And I, at that time, I was really interested to study in Germany yeah. after NEC. And I was just finished with my first my, uh, first year at New York Conservatory. And yeah. it was that summer before my second year. And then I was trying to plan ahead. Okay, I need to apply, you know, next next year where I will, you know, end up for another degree. And I was thinking, okay, Germany sounds like the place to be. And I asked Johannes, like, for recommendations. <laughs> well, Germany. it worked, I guess. Yeah, and he gave me some school names and teachers. And then at the end, he said, but you should also consider my school. <laughs> yeah, and so dude. we kept in touch. And I was at that time, that following fall, I was applying for the Fulbright program. And part of the application, you need an um, advisor from overseas where you will be based from that school to kind of be the advisor and overseer of your project that okay. you're applying with. So I asked him if he would be interest to, interested to be my advisor for this Fulbright program, and he agreed. So we stayed in contact because of that. And then a few months later, in um, actually it was the morning of Halloween, <laughs> okay. I got an email. I woke up and I got an email from Johannes Schleifli, and he said, actually, there's a spot opening up next February. Would you be willing to come? Wow. Just like that. And I was really nervous and you know woke up with like a scream and ran <laughs> over to my roommate like look what just happened and, that's great. um so basically that's how i got into zurich um i came actually on march 2nd i still remember the day because march 1st i had to really squish my last semester at nec into like six five six weeks of um of the first of the semester to finish my degree. So I flew over on March 2nd, I arrived at the airport and then I get an email from Johannes and he says, if you're here, you should come by to school. We have a lecture or conducting lesson now. So from the airport- uh, uh, Hello, I just landed. <laughs> yeah. So there was no, no like time for adjusting. It was just jumping into the next degree. Okay, here we start. Yeah, and that's, so I arrived in March and in May I came back, I flew back to Boston for the graduation <laughs> to finish my degree. So I was kind of overlapped a few months. Unbelievable. Of my... Yeah, I guess you weren't taking any academic classes at NEC at that point or you wouldn't have been able to exactly. finish them. Exactly. So I just had like a piano class that I needed to do um, <laughs> as an elective course. Yeah. So I asked my piano teacher to give me like 
you know, six hours in one week rather than 30 <laughs> minutes each week. It was just yeah. like cram everything, what we had left over. And oh. my conducting teacher, Charles Peltz, was gracious enough to let me finish early as well. Yeah. Wow. Well, obviously they saw that it was a great opportunity and they didn't want to hold you up. Yeah, I'm very thankful. Wow, that's amazing. What a fun story. And I, you know, I don't I don't think you're to blame for not knowing who Johannes Schleffli is because he's I think he's quite famous in Europe, but American right. conductors seem to not know who he is unless they have done one of his workshops or something like that. But right. I have a it's feeling a that in country. Europe he's much more well known. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's the great thing about Europe too, that the countries are so much smaller. So the distance is, you know, much smaller yeah. than in the States. And so once you're well known in one country, it's easy to get yourself known in other countries. Now you said before you were interested in studying in Germany. That's what you asked Johannes about. Yeah. So why why were you so interested in Germany? And then by the way, I'm curious when you started speaking German because you speak it really well. I know you've been living there for a while. So how did <laughs> when did that happen? Oh geez. If I I mean I actually feel still a bit ashamed not to be able to speak all that fluently. Um, I mean, I can speak on a you know small talk basis um, when I'm at the restaurant and coffee shops. I mean, these things are no, are not a problem. But when it gets to more of a deep conversation, then I'm I'm still not there yet. Mm. Um, I wanted to study in Germany only because of just from hearing from colleagues their own experiences. And of course, in Berlin, you have like seven opera houses and the Berlin Philharmonic and <laughs> many orchestras in the same city. And I remember that was one of the advice that I got from older um, doctoral st students who told me when you choose your school, make sure there are as many artistic things, organizations around your school. So you, mm. you're always able to attend concerts and be inspired. Yeah, good. Um, yeah. And at that time, yeah, I was only focused on Germany. I didn't even think to think outside. I was, I don't know, maybe a bit ignorant <laughs> and naive. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know either. I, when I was when I was much younger, I studied Italian because I got it in my head that Italian was the language of music. It kind of is, you know, because, uh, you know, sure. Allegro, yeah. pianissimo. And <laughs> so I studied Italian. Italian for a long time to get good at it. And then when I was in my master's program, by the way, I went to Cal State Long Beach as well. We have that in common. So when I was at Cal State Long Beach, I had an opportunity to study. They had an exchange program with a conservatory in Germany. And um, the professor, I was actually teaching at Cal State Long Beach. I was teaching music theory. And the professor from Germany came to my office and said, do you have any students that would like to study in Germany? And I was like, uh, yeah, I would. <laughs> and, and then I went to Germany and that's when I realized that, uh, well, European musical culture is rich, of course, but all of the great composers from way back that we think about Beethoven and Bach and Mendelssohn and Schumann and Schubert, they're all Germans. And yeah. so then I realized I've been spending all these years studying Italian. I should have been studying German. So I, I immediately I started studying German. And then when I when I lived in Germany for a while, I got pretty good at it. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't plan it. It was like, yeah, kind of an accident. And, and so when you landed in Zurich and you got a text from Johannes that said, come over to the conservatory right now, was the class in German? Yes. Everything in German. <laughs> Did you understand anything on day one? Not much. No, I, I came <laughs> to Switzerland with maybe like a month of uh, German basic training from NEC. Yeah. Um, because it was such a short time to get ready for Switzerland. Right. And yeah. at the, I had like four months between when I found out and to get my visa ready and everything and finish NEC. And yeah, and then I could squeeze in a one month of uh, German course, which they mm. offer every semester. Yeah. Well, do you feel like I, I, I had a similar, I had a little more time. I had a whole semester to take a German class and then I had a whole summer. Mm -hmm. So I took one first semester German at Cal State Long Beach. And then in the beginning of the summer, I was just cramming on my own and taking lessons. And then when I got there, I was the Cal State Long Beach had the, like a intense language course, like six weeks where you live with a German family and you take lessons all day long every day. So I had like, let's say five or six months to get prepared. And when school started in September, I think it was, I could speak German sort of, not very well, but I could like, like like you said, I could like order food in restaurants and I could basically understand. And musical terms are not not that different in German. So I could understand, if someone talked to me about music, I could basically follow the conversation. Right, but, right. But it must've been hard like day one, get over here now, bring your bags. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I thankfully had a, um, a classmate who was also from the States and he helped me a lot to assimilate into the new culture and he gave me a lot of tips. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, Zurich is such an international city. We have, everyone speaks English, right. you know, yeah, yeah. unless they're of the older generation, well, all young people speak English and it's very well spoken. <laughs> Yeah, and all the restaurants also speak English, so it's it's not as hard as Germany. Um, for example, when you enter a German school for the audition, you have to do, I think you have to present a certificate of like B1 or B2 level. B2 mm. level, I think, is the yeah. minimum level you need to have. Which is um, pretty good, Zurich, speaking ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. and in Zurich, they don't require it as, as, as uh, adamantly as German schools do. Okay. So we we have it easy. I, I can say that. It's not something that is an excuse, but <laughs> I'm working on my German. I did um, take intensive courses here. Yeah. Uh, when I first arrived, I took an intensive course um, in the fall semester. So I came in the middle of their spring semester. So I couldn't sign up for any German class when I first came over. Oh, I so see. Then after the summer, I I started my German course and the semester course, but with Johannes's class, as I said at the very beginning, we travel a lot. So because of the traveling, also the semester courses didn't actually help so much because I was missing always like half of the classes of 16 weeks. That was not yeah. there not six or eight weeks. So then, you know, once you get behind, then it's very hard to catch up and so on. So I stopped taking semester courses and tried to do it on my own. Yeah. Well, I felt like um, I felt like I learned German faster when I just spoke German all day, every day. I made a lot of mistakes, but um, taking German class is one thing. And then, mm -hmm. you know, actually like trying to get along in the world and, and deal with people. And, <laughs> and I made a, a pretty good friend in, in Berlin and he and I would just speak German all day, every day. And so that really helped a lot. Because I yeah. learned how to speak conversational German, like right, first, right. I was young then. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you look still young. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, no, but in the book, you learn like book German, you know. Right, right. And then when I was talking exactly. to this guy, he was using all these words, and I was like, "What does that word mean?" And he goes, "Oh, that's like a joint." And I was like, "Oh, like you're not going to learn the word for joint in class, probably." <laughs> yeah. And so I learned how to. I learned like regular person German when I was talking with people <laughs> and I and I refused to speak English it was really hard because all the German students wanted to practice English with me and yeah and okay. I just said like no I am in your country yeah. I want to speak German right right and they really appreciate that when you're when you try to speak German yeah. I think so yeah now it's been a long time I lived in Germany back in uh, I left in 2002 so now I struggle to keep up with it and mm -hmm. so I go to Europe um, pretty much every um, summer and I don't go to Germany or Switzerland but I go to Europe and whenever I run into German speaking travelers or other conductors I try to speak German as much as possible just to keep the skill yeah that's awesome yeah okay so are you done studying now <laughs> oh boy I'm still studying because <laughs> <laughs> you still live in Zurich so there must be a reason right right I'm still studying um, okay. it's it's my third master's degree. And I think many <laughs> okay. people can relate that, you know, when you're a foreigner in a country, one of the easiest ways to stay in the country is to have a visa of a student, student visa. Yes. So that's um, one reason why I decided to continue. But the main reason is of course, to have more time with Johannes. And he is soon going to be re retiring. Um, they have a rule in Switzerland when you reach age 65, then you have to retire. So to get the most out of him, I'm, I have um, decided to extend my studies. Uh -huh. But I'm also teaching at the university now, um, not as an not as like an um, official professor's title at all, not like that at all, but I'm teaching um, or uh, beginning conducting classes. Great. Yes, and I have a, also a small um, assistant job at the school. So I help organize ensembles with musicians you know each tuesday and thursday and have to get the parts the music ready organizational stuff um but i because of those two things also i decided to stay um and now i am assisting at the tonhalle orchestra zurich with Pavel yeah. so i, I heard your contract was extended yes yes i'm so happy and thankful Great. very thankful yeah especially in the time of the pandemic i'm very thankful for the job security yeah and you're working elsewhere. Don't you have another directorship somewhere? 
<laughs> yes, in Zurich, I have two amateur orchestras where I'm the music director. Okay. And one of them is a string orchestra, which was fantastic for me because I'm not a string player. Okay. Uh, I used to play clarinet. I majored that as my bachelor's degree. Yeah. And it's great to be able to work with just strings and to learn, okay, the bowing differences and technical things. And our concert master is one of the sweetest people I know, and she's very helpful to help me learn the language of a string and what changes can easily change the phrasing, you know, with bow changes and playing a tip and da 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 da. So it's great to have that orchestra. Um, it's been a huge growing experience for me with that orchestra. And then with the other orchestra, it's a symphony orchestra made up of business people um, who graduated from the University of St. Gallen. And St. Gallen is known for, I think, business, economics. They're on, yeah, I think they're famous for economics. And the alumni, alumni of this university have this joined to create this orchestra, which was founded only two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the pandemic, of course, our second season was completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Sorry. Many... Yes, yes. So we're trying now to rebuild step by step to start our third year together, but rather our official second season. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you're doing so much stuff there. And I have a feeling that uh, I don't know if you're still traveling around, but before the pandemic, you were guest conducting and, and getting around Europe a little bit too. Yes, conducting. I've done only actually like a couple of times, um, a few times in Germany and once in Denmark. Yeah. And yeah, I still feel like I'm at the very, very, very beginning of my career and slowly, hopefully, you know, more doors will open. But yeah, I'm still at the very humble stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing great. And um, I'm, I'm so jealous that you're there studying with Johannes. <laughs> I'll tell him hello. I, it came time for me to do my doctorate. Um, and uh, well, we don't know each other very well. We, you and I barely know each other. <laughs> but but uh, so I, I, got my ma I got my master's in music composition at UCLA. I, got, I went for a second master's at Cal State Long Beach, which I never finished, by the way. But that was okay. in conducting. And then I moved to Germany. And then after Germany, I moved to New York, which is why I never finished my second master's degree. But, um, but then I worked for 20 years as a professional conductor and I, and I was in the army for a while as a conductor yeah. and all these other things. So I never went the, the doctorate route. So fast forward to a few years ago, I mm -hmm. left the army and was thinking about getting a doctorate and I approached Johannes and some other places in Europe, but they don't have doctorate degrees yeah. like, like we do right. in, in the US and to get a job at a college at least. In, mm -hmm. in America, you've got to, you just got to have a doctorate. So I ended up yeah. going to um, University of Colorado with uh, Gary Lewis and Gary Lewis yeah. is in the same school as Don Schleicher. I mean, Don Schleicher and Gary Lewis are best buddies. Very close, cool. and, yeah, and, yeah. And like Schleffley, it's like the same style of conducting and the same style of teaching. Um, but man, I really would have liked to study with, with Johannes. Well, don't lose hope because he is planning some things. It's a secret, so I cannot, I cannot oh, say. Oh, okay. <laughs> if it's a secret, then don't tell me, but I'll keep my ear to the ground. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know he is very active in the workshop world, and I've tried to hire him a few times to do my workshop in the Czech Republic. Ooh. He's always booked. He's always booked. He mm. goes, oh, that's what I'm doing my workshop in this place. That's what I'm doing my workshop. Well, what about this month? Oh, I'm doing my workshop in this place. I think, okay, Johannes, is, he gets around okay. a bit. Yeah, you have to book him at least two years in advance, I think. Yeah. And so I think when he does all these workshops, do you travel with him? Do you go study with him in these various places or are those for him and other students? Um, both. So with within our school system, we have, I think, about five projects per semester. Some are big projects, some are smaller projects. Smaller projects, meaning they're within Switzerland and they're just like a one day or two day you know, three hour sessions with a professional orchestra. Mm -hmm. The big ones are when you spend one whole week with a professional orchestra of a big symphony size. And those we do, each student I think uh, does under full time, they do uh, anywhere between three to four per semester. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you study with them for three years in your bachelor's or two years for your master's, you've been to many places mm -hmm. and, 
there are some courses like in in January, there's one in Sofia, Bulgaria, where I think two or three of our students are part of the course. And then he opens it up with 10 other people who are not in our school system. So then other people also have a chance to study with him. And Great. he does that also in the summer a few, couple of times. Yeah, also in Germany and Konstanz. Um, oh, he wonderful. has a course every September. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I remember the town where he had the workshop in the Czech Republic. It was Teplice, oh, and okay. the reason I the reason I went there to visit with him is because I had some friends that were studying in Zurich, and they they told me, "Oh, we're going to be in Teplice." I was in Kromir which is also in Czech Republic, and okay. um, and it was a beautiful town. But I remember the class. It was probably twelve or fifteen students, and I think three or four were from his class in Zurich. So that makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Also in, in uh, Ju uh, July, uh, August, he does the workshop in Gstaad Festival in Switzerland. Uh -huh. That's a fantastic workshop because you get 20 minutes every day with a really high level professional orchestra. Yeah, great. And there are three concerts, sometimes four concerts, and everybody gets a chance to conduct. So it's really good. Yeah. It's really well, good I should workshop. work harder to find some free time and, and study with him at one of these one of these workshops. But life is busy, you know? Yeah, and how is it, how are you doing in the states with this COVID and cancellations and lockdowns? Well, you know, it's up. It goes up and down. Uh, it was in earlier in the fall. It was going. You, you, I know that you're keeping in touch with the news, so you probably know all this. But at the university where I teach, which is in Topeka, Kansas, we had face-to-face -face orchestra starting in late August, and uh, we weren't pretending like there was no virus, but kind of. Yeah, we wore masks and we did social distancing, but then we had face-to-face -face classes. And then there were a couple of students who were quarantined and then there was one student that tested positive and then, you know, it started getting worse and worse. So yes. we've stopped meeting in person. Um, mm -hmm. Actually this week we stopped, uh, but okay. I did my final project last Thursday, the orchestra and I did a, we did a video recording and then we put it online. And then like the next day, the department said no more orchestra. So I was really lucky that we finished it. Yeah. I have a friend at another university yes who the day before his final concert, they shut down orchestra. So it was like, oh, we did all that work. Oh, we can't even have the concert, right. it's really disappointing. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Well, Here in uh, Zurich also, we had a second, second light lockdown. So now I'm also teaching on Zoom as well. Oh yeah, you have to teach the conducting students on Zoom. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. So we do a lot more discussion-based and score analysis-based yeah. lectures rather than yeah, sometimes we do some exercises where I, I do something and they try to stay with me. Um, and, you know, I can see their physical movement. So that's good. Then I can comment and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, great. I, I um, was teaching undergraduate conducting last spring when the when the pandemic started. And mm -hmm. I also had the idea, oh, we'll just do a bunch of score study. But students mm -hmm. have to conduct. They have yeah, to definitely. stand in front of me, even if it's just five yeah. people or 10 people, they have to, mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. feel it, I think. So it totally. wasn't very productive. Totally. Uh, we're almost out of time, but thank you so much for having coffee with me and oh, good sure. luck finishing your Pleasure. degrees. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk again soon. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Holly. Bye.